everyone and welcome to another news coulomb video and another ford ranger electric update here's the the charging port that it's an avcon uh, charging port uh, the cover was broken off and missing now i've purchased a replacement uh, charging cover now um, I guess just sort of walking through all of the things that I need to do in here. Uh, woo. I have no idea what you're looking at right now because you are holding up the aluminum hood. Thank you very much. All right, and uh, so the, the good thing is, right, these, uh, these covers here are just basically, it's just these Phillips heads. So I should just be able to take this front grill off. And then I believe it's just bolts holding on the Avcon charger port. Um, which, uh, spoiler alert, I will be swapping out. Uh, no need for an adapter. Uh, so, you know, one of the cool things is, you, know, you look down here, you can see the... Uh, the AC wires, the power wires, uh, you follow them around, right? They come in here, standard sort of two phase, I guess, or, or, or split phase um, AC that comes into this charger. Now this charger problem is, it's big, bulky, and programmed for, um, programmed for the NIM cells. So it's not gonna work for the lithium ion or the lithium iron phosphate cells that I purchased. So this is gonna to have to go. I mean, I, I think people have used this to charge the pack, the voltage would be right. Uh, it would just be feeding DC uh, current, but these are programmed to only provide something like 20 amp hours of capacity or, or, or 30 amp hours of capacity before shutting down. Um, and cycling off. There's a, a heat cool cycle. There's a whole bunch. Of, it's a really complicated charging cycle uh, for NIM cells, whereas the lithium iron phosphate, it's just basically constant current, constant voltage. Um, so this will have to be pulled. I showed underneath, this is sort of that fake housing here um, that's being used to prop everything up. Uh, I do have a charger to replace this um, that's not pre-programmed, but it will run with the BMS uh, to charge the battery. But I'm gonna need to pull this and replace that. And some of these wires, I don't know if they're passed through. I need to go back to the wiring diagram and figure out what some of these inputs and outputs are. Um, because I might just be able to pull this whole charging unit out um, and just not worry about it. Just reseat like the, the, you know, the high voltage junction box uh, and things like that, um, just maybe reorient it. Who knows, maybe I'll even have a frunk. But the other thing is, so that's the, the main power wires going into the charger, but there's also the communication, uh, proximity lines, all of that for this. And so, yeah, it has these pilot wires here, um, pilot communication, and uh, that turns out, <laughs> that they, well, maybe I can't see them here. Uh, but yeah, there's just a little plug to plug them in. So I'm gonna be unplugging that because I'm gonna need those as well, uh, converting this to that stand, that same, uh, oh, actually, here it is, right there, you can see straight down. Um, but converting this over to that J1772 uh, standard uh, so I don't have to worry. Um, about finding an Avcon charger or using an adapter. It'll just have native uh, charging um, for the modern era. But uh, anyway, so that's kind of what it is, is it's just basically a teardown. So I'm just gonna start unscrewing stuff and un unbolting stuff. And hopefully, you know, if I cat catalog everything well enough that I can keep track of where everything goes or where it doesn't go or where it used to go, um, put things back in their place, or if they're removed completely, uh, bypass them appropriately. Yes. Yes, Rivian. Rivian, read. It's a pure electric vehicle made by a manufacturer. 1999. And that's how we're going to party. So let's, let's get to screwing. 
or unscrewing. Time to go mobile. All right, so as you can see, this is this is the uh, mechanism for the door here. Um, maybe I need to unscrew this so I can. Well, I could probably reach these bolts in here without much trouble. You can see the housing port here. There's a bracket here. So this is interesting because this is all. I think this is all like a bracket spacer. It's pretty. It's pretty rugged. Um, it feels like in terms of it's it's not moving but this is this is this is plastic this is a hardened plastic um but yeah the the these are all bolted in here um so i think this main bracket is something that i'm going to keep in place uh and then this is just to hold the, the, the charging port cover on. So, uh, and then of course behind this is, is where the, the Avcon charger itself is housed. So what I'm going to have to do is, well, I don't know if I have to pull the bracket off or not, but I think I'm just going to pull this whole unit out. Um, all the brackets this side bracket, this side mount, and then I'm going to have to do measurements to make sure that I have a back plate that actually fits. Like I said, this is pretty sturdy. I'm actually impressed with how how rigid this is, but then again, considering the Avcon, it's a really heavy uh, plug that you have to plug in. Um, I guess I guess that makes sense that it's that sturdy. So, so the next step is actually just pulling basically this whole assembly off get going with this 5 sixteenths and see if we can just start unbolting everything. I don't think these were on very hard at all, any very tight, n not a whole lot of torque in them. So it looks like there's another bracket holding the charging lines in. Now, um, I'd have to double check the exact amperage of the stock NIM charger, but I actually um, have to be very careful. The charger that I got is actually a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger, and depending on how I want to program it, ooh, and that's a tiny bolt compared, so nowhere near the size. Uh, but depending on how I want to program the replacement charger it could take up to 30 amps I believe it is it's not 32 but I think it is a, a full 30 amp charger so um, I might need to upgrade some of these wires so this this assembly is coming out pretty quickly all right so there's also another bolt here in this bracket so there's it's almost like there's a housing and a bracket and a bracket and a housing um, and like I said, I actually don't know if I'm going to be able to get in here, maybe with a opening wrench. All right, well, we're burning daylight, and uh, you know, I got most of this bracket out here on this side. But if you notice, uh, this, this is the part that's going to be a pain to, to get to right in here. What's this? A ranger caught off his guard. <laughs> oh, oh well, couldn't help it. Um, one of the things that I'm doing here is, uh, well, this looks like it's, you, if you look in here, it looks like a slider setup. So uh, just, just breaking the nuts loose should be enough to... Um, to be able to actually get in and uh, slide 
slide the entire uh, system off. Uh, so before I actually start doing this, one, I'm going to end up just spinning forever if I don't lock down uh, these nuts on the other side. Yeah, so you see there are a couple of nuts right down here um, that I have to lock down. I'm just going to use a croissant wrench to go with my metric 8mm. Uh, okay, and so because this is at sort of a, a slider point over here, I'm actually not going to, to take this off the full way. Um, I'm going to leave this in place uh, while I... Uh, I'm going to leave this in place so uh, these bolts can be used as a guide to put this back on again. So now that I've loosened it, I can take this whole array out and uh, I can start uh, detaching the electrical hookups and, uh, and then sort of work from there. Alright, so now that I have this slid out, um, I'm going to have to get these wires off the back probably pop open the hood one more time because I want to track how this the, these wires these three wires go around like I said I think I don't know what co what color is what but one's I think calm and proximity um, but I, I want to make sure I know how they're tracked through because I think I can just unhook it and then push that wiring harness back through so let's go ahead and get the uh, the hood popped yeah, as you can see, um, yeah, down here is the wiring harness connection for these three wires. It's got a little uh, plug here that I'm going to push through. And then uh, for this big one, which is the AC power line, I'll, it'll take two hands to do, but it might actually just slide out. So, yeah, let's take care of those things now. Right, so, I'm going to try to squeeze these pins out. Okay. The thing is, this plug is pinned to the chassis on the side that I would be unplugging. So uh, it's kind of necessary to, to pull it out no matter what. So let's see. These usually require some sort of reach around. I believe that's the technical mechanical term for it. Uh, unplug them. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Actually, might not need a specialty tool at all. Nope. So I can actually... This is not bad. The plunger was accessible just with the, the thumb. So I was able to just go ahead and uh, get this low power connector undone. I actually don't know if I'm going to reuse those wires. So um, they might or might not uh, feed through to a point that I can later on attach them to where they need to be. Um, for now though, they just go straight onto the back of this Avcon um, just like you'd expect them to. Now this is a little bit different. This this plug-in, um, it's not quite like a gland uh, fitting. There's definitely, like they're wanting this attached in here fairly well. Uh, it is high power AC after all. I don't know, I might actually get to destroy so few things here. I don't know if I'm ever going to be using... Um, or reusing this wire anyway, and I definitely don't need this Avcon housing. I, I mean, 
the only reason I'm not reusing this, of course, is because it's broken, this, this, the face of the, the plug. So, um, r rather than try to figure out this possibly like cantilevering setup, I'm just going to cut the cable. Cut the cable, kids. That's what they say, right? So, uh, like a proud papa. This must be 20 year old electrical tape. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, look at how clean that looks. What's exposed now versus what's been there for however long. So this all comes off and then exposes a bundle of AC wires. All right, I got myself a nice set of uh, Klein um, clippers for uh, wire cutters for, uh, this is for heavier du duty wire, but it'll, it'll work fine. Um, for these, it looks like three strands of maybe 10 gauge. Um, not exactly sure, but this is good for up to 350 MCM, which is far more than any gauge that I would be using um, here. But I'm going to go ahead and just clip these off and uh, yeah, it'll be out with the old. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. A little too easy actually. Here's the Here's the port, or at least, uh, yeah, here's kind of how it sits in the housing. Um, yeah, let's go take a look at something. You know, this is the, the one we just pulled out of the white one. Now, notice how this little flange is broken, right? Uh, someone broke this off. This is actually what the charge port door opens like. So, um, I mean, it's a pretty nifty housing pretty straightforward um, but I'm going to be pulling this out now the thing is what I need to do next and I'll walk through the process as I do it uh, this this portion is the portion that's the Avcon charger the rest of it on the outside the shroud is the housing uh, and so like it bolts the charger into the housing and then of course this other bolt hole is for holding it on to the actual chassis. So what I need to do is get final measurements for this Avcon charger in terms of width, because what I'm gonna need to do is create something that fits within this front plastic housing uh, that will support other charging standards, so, or modern charging standards. And of course, I, I did get another charging port cover. So it won't look like this on the White Ranger when I'm done. It'll look like this, just a standard standard face, like what we have here on the Ford Ranger. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you think. Um, have you, uh, have you, you know, switched out a charging port before? Have you updated to a new standard before? Have you converted an EV? Um, like this before and, and tried to add charging what was your, what was your experience in terms of you know the wirings the hookups um, you know like I said I think Ford did a pretty good job with how they had this set up um, actually now I'm not even going to be able to find <laughs> the the other the other end of the wire that I pulled off so um, yeah oh there it is yeah, the other the other end of the the wire here. So I hope this uh, video is uh, somewhat informative. If you enjoyed it, please uh, like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.